Hey, what's up everyone? Um, it's Maggie Bot here for Meeples Included. Um, Meeples were out in force at Origins this year. This was my personal first year going to Origins, but several other of our folks and our loved ones were, of course, there for the second or third or even more times. Um, I arrived in on the Tuesday of the day zero and stayed all the way through Sunday and it was a fabulous time, but I figured, um, I would show you some of my photo album and uh, kind of reminisce with y'all. Um, so one of the best things about the way there was uh, my flight was full of nerds. In fact, Tiffany actually saved me a seat on the plane over and we had a good old time. Um, Joel Eddy was on there and Mark and a couple other people. So it was really a good time. Just It was a good way to start out the week and everything. Uh, so I arrived there and I hung out with a bunch of people and by the end of the first even couple hours I already needed to decompress. And right across the street is a place called Barley's and upstairs they had pinball. Um, I went up to the counter and the woman's like, oh, I was like, could I get some quarters please? And she's like, oh no, all the games are free except for the pinball. And I was like, no, I really need some quarters. Um, the Ghostbuster machine that you see on here um, is a pretty neat one. It's sort of like one of the Batman machines where the little ghost comes down and you have to kind of hit it while it's uh, playing around and the Spider-Man machine is really good. I'm not a huge fan of that Game of Thrones table, but you know, we do each their own. Uh, so I got a press pass. Um, I I will admit that Origins made it a little hard to see what that quite would do for you, but it was fine. Um, I got to meet the social media person and kind of get the lay of the land. Um, so I started out my first day of Origins uh, doing playtesting. This is Fire in the Library from my friend Tony Miller. I also played a kind of um, bidding game from Ian Zhang while I was there. And it was a really nice way to start the day. We were a lot of people with like seven of us. Um, and it just so happens I was walking by uh, the Czech Games room, which is kind of off to the side, and Christopher Chung was there. And Chris uh, wanted to play Codenames Duet, so I sat down and we tried to play that. And uh, our game didn't go so well. Uh, we went to a lot of bystanders, and I eventually hit one of his assassins because we just we didn't know each other well enough to really understand each other's clues. I don't think, but um, uh, for lunch uh, we went out to Dirty Frank's, which is a pretty neat little place. It's got lots of veggie vegan options. They have slushies on tap. I put some tequila in mine. It was good times. Uh, we met up with some friends at the bar on two, big bar on two, was told to me by everyone and their mother about, you know, that's where to hang out. Played some for sale, played some okie dokie. Uh, Tiff was wearing her tablecloth because some of the tables in the big open gaming room are kind of splintery, so you always want to have some sort of protection for that. Uh, I literally ended up only playing one game out on those tables. Um, then for breakfast next morning we went to Super Chefs and I had these breakfast nachos and they were the size of my head. Sorry, you're gonna see food pictures because that's what my life is. Um, Hanim Koji was one of the games I had actually brought from home. Uh, I wanted to play it and I had not learned it and I figured, you know, it would be a good time to learn. It turned out to be one of my favorite games I played that week. Um, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. It's so beautiful. Um, it's kind of, kind of like a tug of war, like a battle line, but with a I split you choose action selection. Just really neat and smart and fun. Um, then I went to the Great Way Games meetup, which you might have seen online. Uh, they're a podcast. They're made up of some of the most fabulous people and meeples, of meeples included. And this board is my friend Evans, and he is a witch because he got all of the points forever. I've never seen so many points on a single board. Uh, after that, um, there was kind of this fun little party thing. So you get this poker chip in the mail from North Star Games, and it just says, bring your friends and this chip down to the underground, you know, on this day at this time. And it was right before our Nerd Night event. And we went, and it's at Barley's, right? I had been there the day before. I had played some pinball. And uh, you go down to the, like, left side, and down in this, like, dungeon room they have a whole other bar and North Star Games has set up the new Las Vegas version of Wits and Wagers Party uh, so that'll be going on Kickstarter really soon it was a really fun event everyone in media was there like everyone got these little poker chips and the difference between the Vegas one and the regular Wits and Wagers is that now you can place your bet on red or black if you think that the higher or the lower guesses are correct 
and those are one-to-one -one payouts and you can also do kind of a blind bet like a 10 to 1 bet on a player a specific player if you think they're correct uh, so that was a lot of fun um, we had two people at the table who gambled a lot and we ran out of chips we could have like used all the chips in the room probably by the end of it we were just writing uh, notes on spare pieces of uh, dry erase board uh, next was Nerd Nighters, uh, so this is the whole reason I was at Origins, was to attend this Nerd Night event. Uh, my friend JR is from DFW Nerd Nighters, they put on some really successful charity um, game nights twice a month in the Dallas area, and then they also do things at things like uh, Gen Con and BGG Con, so this year um, John from Gamma was like, you should come and do this at Origins. So we invited Extra Life United um, and everyone we had ever met to come to this room and hang out. Um, for better or worse, we had actually lost the ballroom we were supposed to be in uh, about two hours before the whole thing started. Uh, so the kind folks over at Catan, uh, Donna and them, uh, they let us use their room. And the whole night was so packed, and we did raffles, and we raised $800 for Extra Life, which was really good times. And I saw every single human that's ever been to Origins at this night. It was great. Um, the prize pool, like, we did a raffle every half hour, and the prize table was just jam-packed. It was so many games. It was great. Like, copies of Arkwright were given away. One of the new Wits and Wagers uh, Vegas things was also given out. Um, just really cool ideas. Um, I went back for some more code names because I was kind of upset that I didn't win. And uh, my friend and I actually ended up winning on the last turn. So the last possible guess in the whole game, and we finally did it. So um, it's interesting. So code names do what? Uh, each player can see one half of a clue card, and you need to get all of your green, uh, all of your correct answers, and your opponent needs all of their correct answers before you can win. And so that's like 14 guesses, correct? But you only have a specific number of turns where you can do that. So um, you kind of choose the difficulty before you started, and that will kind of tell you what the, how hard the game's going to be. And it's really difficult for me. Um, but it's nice that you're basically playing like two games of code names at once. <laughs> Um, I did get a demo of Sidereal Confluence, which was like one of the main things I wanted to do at Origins. I unfortunately did not get to demo Lisboa, which was the other big one that I really, really wanted to see. But Sidereal Confluence is from Tess Eddie Dykeman. It's being done by WizKids. It comes out in July. And what it is, is it's a four to nine player real time trading game on. I, it is unbelievable. It's asymmetrical. Every race is very different. And um, it it's a little wild, honestly. It's kind of... My friend Evan said you put your brain in a blender, and that's kind of the kind of crazy it is. Um, so everyone's trading. trading. Almost anything in the game is trading, including the tablecloth, probably. And you're trying to make your little machines run, and the machines kind of work like greed ink machines, where I produce a color cube but I need a different color cube to make my secondary resources. So I have to trade away, like, I trade my greens for your blues so my blues can become yellows. And it's it's interesting and very fun. I've since played um, a full game of it with my friend Chris, who helped develop it or, or just play tested it. Um, and I also played a game of it back when I got home at a very loud bar. I played a six-player game with all new players except for me, uh, which was a delight. <laughs> I, I was told that it wasn't very good at four, but I'm, I'm wondering if that's just a matter of picking the correct races for four players. Um, I'm really interested to see if four or five will work. Um, I also picked up Sentient from Renegade Games. I know this photo is not super great. I have a review of this up on uh, MaggieBot.com or my, my YouTube channel for MaggieBot. Um, the game itself is from J. Alex Cavern. Um, you are drafting cards out of the middle, and um, those cards are going to edit the dice on your player board. And each round, you're going to score the cards that you chose based on how the dice lined up. If they match the card, you get points. And there's a bit of a set collection element in it, too. Uh, really fun, really beautiful game. I can't get over the art. It's just absolutely gorgeous, and the dice are really pretty, too. Um, I don't know how, but my friend Ace was in town for Origins for 
less than a night and we ended up at karaoke um we arrived around midnight maybe later and everyone that was there was already so very gone so like you see on on the screen that's nicole and jr and nicole was with us and we got there and everyone's just tanked and having a good time there were a bunch of people from privateer press that i hadn't seen in a while so that was nice to be able to hang out with them i did sing one song but my voice was so gone by this point of the convention that i can't imagine it sounded very good uh the next morning we went to the angry baker uh that was a uh, breakfast macaroon for pride but i also had this delicious croissant sandwich the angry baker can't recommend that enough everything was perfectly baked like perfectly baked uh, my friend had a scone and it just it was the best looking scone I've seen in a very long time um, we did get to uh, play a little demo of something called costume party from naturalist games um, it was a pretty little like uh, kind of like a little bit deduction a little drafting kind of party game and it was just silly fun and at the con it was only five dollars I think they're gonna sell it for ten in retail but um, it was I Sometimes you just need those little, like, $5 gems. Um, the cards are really beautiful, and uh, Jonathan Yang was like, you, you gotta go see this game. It's over there in that corner. Um, I picked that one up, and I'll, I'll show it off sometime. It's really neat. Um, that whole day, we were hanging out with uh, my friend Rob and his wife, Lindsay, and my friend Nicole, and we played That's a Question, and I swear it's going to ruin lives because I'm so bad at it. <laughs> but um, Rob did win that pretty handily, but the little squirrel tokens on this prototype are adorable. Um, I know that one's not out yet, but it is really cute. It's a little party game. It's kind of like Would You Rather with similar mechanics like that. Um, we did get to play Kerala, though, um, and I wanted to call it Kerala, but the, the gentleman at the booth told me, no, it's Kerala. Um, and this one's a pretty neat one. Uh, every turn you draft a tile and you put it onto your board and your one of your elephants has to be adjacent and then move on to your new tile. And at the end, you want chunks of the different colors. So you want a chunk of black, a chunk of red, a chunk of purple. And you're going to score based on how big those chunks are. Um, next, Rob let me paw through some of the new restoration games that are coming out, the th big three that are coming out this year. Uh, we started with Indulgence, which I'm really excited to try. Uh, this was based off of Dragon Master, which was an older card game, and actually kind of one of the reasons that Rob got into uh, design and gaming and all this other stuff. Um, I You can't see it on this. This is kind of a uh, like a targi size box and it's absolutely gorgeous. Lindsay um, did the spot varnish on there and it's so dang precise. It's ridiculous. She worked so hard on it. Um, the rule book looks lovely. Everything is just gorgeous in it and it comes with this like big old fat ring um, and Rob was surprised that people would take actions in the game that would let them wear the ring even if the actions weren't as good as they should be. Um, he also had a copy of Downforce, which is an older racing game. Um, again, just a, a beautiful cover and everything. And then those little cars in there, they don't actually roll because you don't want them to lose their place in line. But they're just stunningly made. Like, these cars are bananas. Uh, so I thought they were really snazzy. Um, and last was their big one. I think this is going to be their kind of premiere one, which is Stop Thief. Um, and this, this one had some really interesting art in it. All the characters are really beautifully done and stylized and everything. And the names are all kind of jokes about old mysteries and stuff like that. Um, they also had a meeple with chest hair, which I don't know how I feel about that, but I'm okay with it. Yeah. Now I do know how I feel about that. I'm okay with it. Um, but I, I just thought it was really neat. Um, that same angry baker we picked up pies we were going to do a games on the rocks episode um live from origins and our day kind of fell apart we ended up just hanging out me nicole and tiffany um uh, at an airbnb and playing sentient and just like relaxing so all the pies i had i was going to surprise them with to to have on air i ate in, in bed for breakfast the next day we did grab stephanie for a quick pictures together um, on the last day because I didn't have any pictures with Stephanie yet, um, even though I did get to see her just a little bit on the Tuesday. Um, but I got to spend most of the day with Nicole and Tiffany and it was a good time. Um, I did demo Unearth on that last day. 
Um, this game is so beautiful. It's from Brotherwise Games. It does Boss Monster. Um, it looks like Monument Valley. Um, in the middle, there's those cards, and each turn, you're going to uh, roll a dice of your choosing. You have 1d4 and 1d8, and then 3d6. And um, as you try and gain those cards, um, they have victory points on them and a number of stones. And you want to try and get unique sets of cards. You want to specialize in one color. You'll get points for getting stones. Um, there's points everywhere, but it's all kind of tricky because if a card reaches its threshold, whatever single die has the highest number on there, that player earns the card. And so a d6 could technically beat your d8 um, if it rolls better. And I roll famously low pretty pretty much all the time, but I'm hoping wonders make make up for the points that you can that you can do either or. Um, I, I will be picking this up at Gen Con. I'm really excited about it. Um, so. And then on Sunday, they still had four copies of Sidereal Confluence, so I totally bought it. I was trying to avoid it because it was coming out so soon, but I needed it in my life. Um, so over the week, it was 112 steps of fabulousness and happiness, and um, I, I really appreciate anyone that came up and said hello. So overall, I, I did take some footage. I have a little bit filmed, but um, this will be my main contribution to Origins, as well as my upcoming podcast with Chit Chat. Um, myself and Jason talked about games that we had recently played and things we were doing. Uh, so that's chitchat.lipson.com. You can see it over on Meeple's Included's website, and um, all our channels will have that. We comes out once a month, so the next episode is Origins Focused. Um, if I did get to meet you at this con, it was a pleasure. And if I got to see you again at this con, it was a double pleasure. And I really appreciate everyone that makes the expense and time of going to a convention so very worth it. And uh, if you're going to Gen Con, I will see you all there. Bye.